Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're all doing fantastic. So, what we're going to do today is we are going to talk about stress. What is stress? How to manage stress? Stress that's specific to the flight deck and just generally what you guys can do to avoid getting into a stressful situation, well, not getting into a stressful situation, but to deal with a stressful situation, all right? So, stay tuned. I think you're going to like this one. So if we start with a definition of stress, well, a definition of stress is kind of, there are some very fancy words for how to define stress, but generally speaking, it's a feeling of a pressure that's being um, exerted on a person that the person feel is at the limit or exceeding their capability. Okay, that's, that's stress for you. And stress comes in many different forms. What we can start by saying is that you need stress in order to uh, be able to function as a human being. Okay? Without stress, you wouldn't be able to do anything. You need something that pushes you forward. So, for example, when you get up in the morning, you will feel a certain amount of stress because you need to get out of bed, you need to um, get breakfast, you need to get the kids to school, and things like that, that is a certain amount of stress. Then the stress might increase. You go to work, you find out that there's a deadline on whatever work assignment you have, and that deadline is moved forward, and that might increase your stress level. But generally speaking, stress up to a certain amount is good for you. It increases your um, your ability to perform. And I'm gonna show you a picture up here uh, of a curve that indicates how much your capability um, and performance increases with the stress level. And as you can see from the the picture, you can see that um, as the pressure on a human being builds up, the performance builds up until it reaches a certain point. Those of you who are studying aviation will notice that this curve is very, very similar to a stall curve in an aircraft. And it it is almost the same. You do the same with the aircraft. You try to take as much lift as possible out of the aircraft until it doesn't have it anymore and it falls. The same thing goes for a person, okay? Now, how does this actually look in real life? Well, you've probably seen this. I'm sure that all of you who's watching this video has been in this situation. Say that you are at a math test, for example and you are doing the assignment, and the assignment is on time, and you reach a specific question which you just don't know how to solve. Remember that feeling, how you get kind of sweaty, how your breathing increases, how you get tunnel vision? That is your stress going up, okay? The problem is that when you reach that point, when you get tunnel vision, and the more you concentrate, the less you understand, you've actually reached the top of this stress curve. And now your performance is going down. If the stress level increases more, your performance is going down more and more as the stress increases. And this is negative stress. This is something, a situation that we in the aviation industry and basically in all industries are trying to avoid. In order to avoid this, you need to have some cap- uh, some coping mechanisms, some strategies in order to keep this from happening in the first place. Um, you will probably see this if it happens in the flight deck, the same thing tends to happen to the pilot that are that, that gets into that stress cone. They, they get tunnel vision, they might lose their hearing, um, they don't hear you calling the call outs or whatever. That's when people are at the absolute maximum amount of stress. That just cannot happen. Okay, That's something that we work very hard to avoid. So, how do we avoid this then? Um, well, there are some general things that you always need to think about when it comes to stress management. and. Um, some of them are very straightforward, as in you need to keep a balanced diet, you need to uh, keep exercising um, so that your body feels well, you need to be well rested, you need to sleep okay, um, make sure that that's kind of a prerequisite for being well rested, uh, try to avoid excessive use of coffee, of obviously of alcohol, of tobacco, things like that, that would actually um, impact your body negatively and thus decrease your level of stress capability. That's on a general level. Now, on a more subtle level, you have to understand that stress is accumulative. Okay, And what I mean by that is that stress that you have latent in other parts of your life is going to be at the back of your head and it's going to affect your performance. So, 
if you picture stress as being like a um, like a glass of water, all of the latent stress that you have in your life, which might be problem with your spouse, it might be economical problems, it might be a fight with your best friend, or it might be something else that's kind of nugging in the back of your head, that fills up that bottle or that um, um, glass of water with stress. And you only have that glass of water with stress available. Okay, So as you fill it up with all the things that are latent in your life, you will have less and less available to use in case you need it at work. So if you have all of those problems lying behind you, you will be less, you will be less able to cope with stressing factors that will happen in the flight deck or in your job as a banker or a mailman or whatever it might be. This is really, really important to remember. And the way to cope in with this is that you need to, to take kind of the bull by the horns, if you understand what I mean. When you have, if you have marital problems, for example, you need to deal with it, okay? You need to maybe go to marital counseling or you at least need to work, work it out with your spouse. Don't let a, an argument, for example, you know, don't sleep in an argument. Always try to resolve it so that you don't wake up and go to work with that argument still in your head because it will have an adverse effect on your, um, your ability to cope with stress and also, of course, then if you're in the aviation industry, the safety. Right? So deal with it. The same when it comes to friends that you might be fighting with. Deal with it. Talk to them. Always deal with the things as they come. Do not store them up and leave them because you're actually not leaving them. They're still there. And remember that, and this goes for everything, when it comes to, to financial problems as well, try to deal with them, find a strategy to deal with them. Um, so th those are things that you, you can do to kind of keep your stress level low, right? That's when you get to the flight deck. Now, when you actually get into the flight deck, it's a different thing. So all of these things, the, all of these countermeasures that I've already talked about, you should have already done, okay? You get into the flight deck, the flight deck is full of stressors. We normally work on a really, um, really, really tight time schedule uh, that produces stress. The other thing is it's a very noisy environment, generally the flight deck. Uh, you will have um, the, uh, the higher pressure altitude, the really dry air that makes you kind of, <coughs> you know. Uh, you will have um, interruptions by air traffic control, by cabin crew, by your colleagues. And also, uh, flight deck is one of those environments where you might have a really low stress level until something happens and the stress level goes up really, really quickly. Okay, So you might be doing an approach and it's absolutely okay until you select flaps and the flaps doesn't come out. You know, the, the level of stress you had when you selected flap and the level of stress you have when you realize that this, the flap does not come out are completely different and it goes at a split of a second. So what can you do then? Well, Really, really important, and this goes for all of you, but especially you who are uh, in the command upgrade process or are captains already, you need to be able to prioritize the tasks, okay? So you need to be able to know what is important and you need to be able to delegate things. Right? There's a tendency, especially among really new captains, to try to deal with everything themselves, take all the decisions, uh, do all of the tasks themselves and only give a little bit of out to other people. That's, uh, that is not a very effective way of um, teamwork. Use the team to its absolute full capability. Okay, I always try to involve my colleague, my first officer, immediately when I see that something's wrong. So how do you perceive the problem? Okay, do you feel that we've taken all in all the information we need? Is there anything we haven't thought of? What's your opinion about how we're dealing with this? So try to share share it with your colleague, that's one thing. The other thing is make sure that you are <clears throat> giving out tasks to other people. So if you're flying the aircraft, the first officer can do the checklist and let him or her do the checklist and just kind of keep an eye on it, make sure that nothing is being missed. Uh, or, um, or cabin crew, maybe they can do something. Or air traffic control. So instead of going into a complicated IFR procedure, a holding pattern, maybe you can get a vector and stay on that vector. That way you can take a little bit of your mind away from the navigational part and focus on whatever problem you have at hand. So prioritize, you know, fly the aircraft, aviate, navigate, communicate, uh, and also 
try to dish out different things to different people to reduce the amount of stress that you have on you. All right. Okay. So that is one stress um, reducing a mechanism. And this, the next thing I'm going to tell you is very important. So listen, listen closely now. You know how I'm always pushing for, for you guys to, to really pay attention when it comes to your ATPL theory, when it comes to your training, when it comes to going to school and maybe going taking higher education. The reason I'm doing that, guys, is because the best, lab, the best way of reducing stress is knowing what you're doing. Okay? It's being competent at your work. So... The more you know, the more experience you have, the more knowledge you have of your SOPs, your procedures, your technical systems, uh, your IFR procedures, the more competent, the more confident you will be with what you're doing and the less stressed you will have. And that's just a fact. Um, for you, those of you who are not in the aviation industry, just picture you know, your first day at school or your first day at your new workplace. Remember how you didn't know how, how anything was working? You didn't know who to speak to, or you didn't know how the classes were, or where the classrooms were, or whatever. Remember how that made you feel? How you felt kind of lost, and any kind of increase in stress would just make you not break down, but it would really, really affect you? Yeah, it's the same thing here. Remember how now you're feeling in your workplace, now that you've been there for a few years, or you've been in school for a couple of years, and you know where everything is? You are in the exact same position as when you first went into that school or that workplace, but your stress level is way, way lower. It's the same thing when you come into the cockpit. If you are well informed, if you are well read up and you know your shit, it means that your stress level will be lower. That's why it's really important that you concentrate on your school and on your training, okay? And I can't stress this enough. This is crucial and it goes for all ways of life. Uh, this is also why you have to wait for a few years before you can become a captain. Because you have to see a couple of situations, you know. You shouldn't be seeing so many situations for the first time when you're a captain. You need to have seen that as a first officer in order to gain the experience needed to, to be able to cope with a situation better. Guys, that is uh, all I have for today. I really hope that you like it as always. Um, feel free to share this with your friends on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter as always. And also have a look at my Patreon page. Um, I have quite a few of my patrons helping me out now. It's helping me with improving sound quality and stuff with the channel and it's really appreciated guys. So have a look at it, see what you think. And uh, I want to thank you for watching this episode. I, I really hope that you liked it and I'll see you next time. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.